Hi folks, and welcome to a brief tutorial on the use of masks, and in this case the mask template, with pictures to EXE9. The question came up on the forum about creating a blurred background with a border around it and using that same image smaller with the border also around it inside. The problem was that with the existing feature called frame with pictures to EXE, we can pan and we can zoom that image inside, but we can't rotate it. And one of our users, uh, Gary, would like to be able to rotate that image. Well, it's easy enough to do if you have a border created in Photoshop or some other image editor. And we did that, and I showed how to do it with Photoshop. It's very simple to do. And I created uh, a 16 to 9 and a 3 to 2 red border. It's very easy to create other aspect ratios, uh, such as 4 to 3 or anything esoteric such as 16 to 10 if you want. And you only need three of them or four of them, one for each aspect ratio you want to use. You can change your color with pictures to EXE9 and that's quite simple to do. So to get started, let's add this 16 to 9 aspect ratio image. And then let's go over to Objects and Animations. Once we're there, I'm going to deselect this, and I'm going to add an image, and I'm going to choose that 16 to 9 PNG file, which is a red border with the inside of that border being transparent. So there we go. It perfectly surrounds our image. Now, one of the things about the kind of blur that's done with pictures to EXE is that it has an area completely surrounding the image which is translucent. That is, it's not completely blurred. Um, it has no hard edges. And in order to prevent that from showing around this outer border, this red border, if we reduce the size from full screen, we really should change our zoom on the image itself, so I'm going to select the image, to 98%. Now when you go to change the zoom, make sure that this chain is not broken. And then whatever we do on the x-axis will be reflected in the y-axis and vice versa. So I'm going to change it to 98%. Now this would be apparent if this were smaller than full screen. The only reason for doing that is to keep the blur from extending beyond the border of this red border. So okay we have that done. So now I can go in and blur that as we want to do. So make sure there's a check mark by blur. Make sure the image is selected. And then simply blur it to suit yourself. Okay. So the next thing we want to do, and this is important that we get the order correct. The next thing we want to do is create the smaller border inside. So let's add that same image again that's the red border and then let's size that border to something that we want to use I'll just choose it, it really doesn't matter it's what you want to see in there as far as the size of it is concerned I want to choose maybe 60 percent that's an arbitrary thing so now this, this next step is very important. Now we want to create our mask. Because what we want to do is we're going to mask everything inside this, this little inner red border. And so we right click and say add mask. And then from this menu that we get, we want to add a mask template. I'll go through the mask image video and blank later but right now let's just use the built-in template I'm going to click on that and we want a rectangle so let's get rid of the circle and make it a rectangle and then let's get rid of the blur in the corner radius 
We want a nice clean one. I'm going to say OK. Now this next step is very important. Let's change the size a bit here so we can see a little better. We want to change the size of the mask con container. We want to make sure the mask container completely obliterates this little red triangle because everything that we're dealing with is inside. Now we do not want to hold the shift key and distort. Never distort the mask container. Make it larger or smaller. Do not distort it. So I'm just going to grab a corner up here, left click on my mouse and drag it out so it's larger than where we want, than the area we want masked. It, it doesn't matter how much larger. It can be the whole screen or just a little larger. And the next thing we want to do is click on the mask rectangle. And here we can distort and we want to distort. So what we're going to do here is hold the shift key for the mask rectangle. We're going to drag it down so it fits inside this red border. And we're going to do the same with the sides and the bottom. Now to be sure we've got it accurate, I'm going to go to 500%. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to hold the shift key down. Take the top. See, we were a little bit into it. There we go. I'm going to move over here to the right side, and we're not quite to the border. Find that little handle in the center. Hold the shift key down and drag it so it meets the border. We don't want it to be bigger or smaller. We want it to meet the border. You can do that. If you wanted to be exactly precise, you could do it up here by changing numbers. But this is very, very much close enough. So down at the bottom, we want to hold the shift key down, drag it up so it just fits. And then we'll do the left side and make sure we have it fitting perfectly. So now we're working with the mask rectangle. We can distort it all we, all we want. It won't change things. If we distort the mask container, it will distort the image that's inside. And we don't want to do that. We can distort the mask rectangle. It won't make any difference. So let's go back now to something like 75% so we can see everything. And we're ready to put our image in there. And we put our image under the mask content. So I'm going to highlight the mask content, right click, and add the same image, which is this. And as you can see, it fits perfectly inside. Now, at 100%, we have everything in there. So down here, with that highlighted, we can place our keyframes. Once we set the slide option time and everything, we can place a keyframe over here. I right-click, and I'm going to add a keyframe. And then, with that highlighted, let me go a little smaller here so we can see. We can grab a corner and drag it out or make it smaller. So we want it however we want to start. If we want to start with 100% view, we can drag it right till it fits. Like, like we had over here. We're still out, as you can see, we're still outside our, our time here. So if we drag this over a little bit, we'll be able to see the image. Okay, so let's say we wanted to start with a small image. And then when we get over here, we want to zoom it out. Well, what if we wanted to rotate it? So we just go over here to find rotate. And we can rotate it any way we like. Maybe we want to put another keyframe out here. And bring it back to zero. So now if we drag 
along the timeline, we'll be able to see what happens to that image. So we can zoom it in. We can rotate it, bring it back to zero. If we wanted, we could pan and zoom it. We just put another keyframe in there and change the pan and zoom on it. We could also change the uh, X and Y axis in three dimensions if we wanted to. We can do anything with that image in there that we want to do. If we wanted to change this X and Y axis here, as you can see, we can do that inside. So we have complete control now. One other thing that I would suggest doing is holding the control key down and highlighting or hold the shift key down and choose everything like that. And then temporarily cut. Add a rectangle, or frame rather. Add a frame. I like to frame right click and paste back from the clipboard so we have everything under a frame. And this frame then becomes a controller. So if we wanted to make the whole image and everything inside it smaller or larger, we can do that by keyframe as well. So as you can see, we have a basic situation which is very easy to work with. And we have done exactly what we wanted to do with a mask instead of using the rectangle or the, the framing feature of Pictures DXT, which we don't have the complete control over with this version yet. Now, one thing that, uh, let, let's, let me recap this. So what did we do? Well, the first thing we did was put the main image in, and then we surrounded it with the red PNG frame. Then we changed from 100% on the view to 98%. So had we not, let's just say that we had not changed that to 98%, what we would do is have a little bit of blur outside the red rectangle when we change the size using the frame up here. But by making it 98%, everything stays inside nice and tidy. Okay, so we have now the main image with a red frame around it, and it filled the screen. We had it at 100%, so I'll go ahead and um, take it back to 100% here. And the next thing we did was we put the smaller rectangle in, or the smaller frame, red, red frame, rectangle frame, and we sized it the size that we wanted that inside image to be. And once we got it sized, then the very next step is to create the mask. And so we chose a rectangular mask and made sure that we didn't have a corner radius or a blur. And then we grabbed the outside corner of the mask content, or the mask container, and we drug it so that it obliterated the small inside frame. We want it larger than that frame. We do not want to distort the mask container. And once we had the mask container adjusted, so that it completely covered everything where we wanted the mask. Then we clicked on the mask rectangle right here, and we distorted that mask rectangle so that it perfectly fit inside the red little PNG frame. And in order to be sure we had it perfect, we went to 500% and adjusted by holding the shift key down, the top, bottom, and sides. And it's okay, and we want to distort the mask rectangle to fit. But the mask container, we never want to distort it because that would distort the image inside. That's essentially all there is to it, folks. It's a very simple thing to do. And we'll go, and the next day or so, I'll try to create... Um, some masks in Photoshop and show you how you can use the other features of masking. Masking is really not mysterious. It's quite simple.